There's joy in the house of the Lord. Hosanna, save us. Blessed is he. All right, let's sing together. We worship. We worship the God who was, and we worship the God who is, and we worship the God who evermore will be. Yeah. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Come on, there's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Yeah, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. Second verse, we sing. We sing to the God who heals. And we sing to the God who saves. And we sing to the God who always makes a way. As he hung up on that cross, then he rose up on that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Come on! joy in the house of the Lord. Joy the Lord be your strength. We were beggars, now we're royalty. And we were the beggars, and now we're royalty. And we were the prisoners, and now we're running free. And we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing that again. We were, we were the beggars. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We prepare the way of the Lord of worship today. With honor, with glory, we give it all to him. Psalm 47 says, clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. You hear that loud songs? <laughs> we have all the permission in the world to get loud today. The Bible says so right here. It says, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. 
Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises. Lord, we sing your praise today because you are King over all the earth. You are the way, the only way, the way to truth, the way to life, the way to true healing, the way to true freedom. And so we lift you high today. Let every nation proclaim you are King. Let every tongue confess you are God today. Be glorified as we sing loud songs of praise today. Come on, church. Every heart, every heart. Here we go. And let our praise be your welcome. And let our songs be a sign we are here for you. With all of our hearts, we declare we are here for you. Yes, we are. And let your breath come from heaven and fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. And only you. We are here for you. Every voice now, come on. To you, my hearts are open.
Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. Amen. Welcome to Palm Sunday at New Life Church. This is the day where church around the world remembers when Jesus came in on a cold and people spread palm branches in his way, welcoming the king into Jerusalem. And today we get the honor and the privilege of welcoming Jesus fresh and anew into our life. Amen. On Palm Sunday. I'm uh, so glad to be in church with you today. Today, is an historic day in the history of our church, in a 38 year history of our church. Today, we're gonna to take a giant step toward becoming mortgage free, debt free at New Life Church. And I'm so grateful for it. And next Sunday on Resurrection Sunday, I'm gonna tell you a story of a miracle that's about to happen now. And I'm believing for that, I'm trusting for that. If you've never been a part of a service like this, in just a moment, we're gonna go back into some songs and worship. And I'm asking for each of you, if you can, as if you, we've been praying now since uh, January, January, February, and March. Pam and I have been praying, you've been praying, and we came today ready to give. So I want you to look in the seat back uh, pot right in front of your seats, there's some offering envelopes there if you wanna give with an offering envelope, or if you brought a check, or if you brought just cash, you wanna use an offering envelope, those are there for you. You can fill that out, we're gonna sing two songs, and at any moment during these next two songs, when you feel led, when you feel ready, I want you to step out by faith and you see these baskets up front. There's baskets toward the front and there's some baskets in the back. If you wanna to go to the back of the room and give, that's fine too. And you're asking, well, Pastor Brady, why are you wanting us to come forward? Why, why is it necessary to get out of our seat and do this? Because I believe there's an act of solidarity. There's, there's something happens when we come forward together where all of us are participating. There's something powerful in my life that's happened every time we've come to one of these services. When Pam got out, I remember one time, Pam and I got out of our seat with a check in our hand. There was a single mom that got out right next to us and walked down the aisle with us. And I knew that her life was a mess. Her life was a stressful mess. But by faith that day, she was going to give. And I just remember Pam and I walking alongside her. We just reached over and put our hand on our, her back and her shoulder as we walked down the aisle together and gave. And something happened in my heart that day. Something happened in her heart that day because we did that together. An act of solidarity, coming forward, trusting the Lord that we can do this together. And so today we're going to give to our legacy offering. We started the year with $9.6 million of debt. And the elders and I heard the Lord and he, the Lord said very clearly to us, challenge the church to be debt free this year so that New Life Church can run at full strength in the days ahead. So that we can run faster and further and do more in our city and more in our world than we've ever done before. So today, that's, this moment has arrived where we can do that together. So I just want you to turn your hands toward heaven and I want to just go into this offering time. Can we just go into this with gratitude? What a joy. What a joy to be a part of this. Father, we're thankful that you love this church. Lord, New Life Church is your idea. It was your idea. It is your idea. And you have called us. You've put your hand on us. You have commissioned us. You have established this church in this city for the sake of the city. And today, we come with joy in our heart, with gratitude in our heart, 
And we give not out of compulsion, not out of guilt, but we give today with great faith and with great joy. Father, bless this offering. Take what is given today, large gifts and the widow's might. Lord, would you take this and bless it? And Lord, would you return it back into our city? Lord, every dollar that's given today, I pray you would multiply it back into ministry. Ministry to the hurting, to the poor, to the forsaken in our city. And Lord, today we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be a part of this. And we ask it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we're going to sing now. And at any point in these next two songs, when you feel ready, when you feel late, let the Lord just step out right now. Step out and come and give. And let's do it as an act of worship today. Come on, let's give as, as we worship the Lord.
church, let's keep praying now. for doing it. He's always been faithful to us, church. He shows up. He shows up and he'll show up again. So God, we pray for a miracle as we express our gratitude to you. For we know that you supply all things. For we know the hopes you have for our city. For we know the dreams in your heart. So we say, with everything that we are, God, and for everything that you're doing, all we can say at this point is thank you, Jesus. We say, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah, in the say thank you Jesus today we say thank the Lord thank you Jesus I want you to point your hands toward these sacrificial gifts let's just pray a blessing over this offering today may it go and be multiplied father take these loaves and fishes and break it and divide it and multiply it and we pray Lord that every dollar that's given would turn into ministry to people that this Lord these these sacrificial gifts that were just given Lord I bless the generosity of this house. I thank you for it. But Lord, Lord, take what was given and do what only you can do. And that's to take it and multiply it and use it in miraculous ways. So Father, we're thankful today for that opportunity to give. We thank you today that you're going to do something powerful and supernatural and holy in this house. And we're grateful for it. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want you to turn and tell somebody they look great, they smell great. Tell somebody, come on, come on. Tell somebody happy Palm Sunday. 
Introduce yourself. All right, good morning, good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. Welcome to New Life Church. I wanna welcome everyone that's watching online, watching on KRDO. We have lots of people that tune in. We have, hey, even the dogs are crying out, come on. If we go silent, the dogs will cry out. <laughs> Only at New Life, all right. So it's good to have you today. I want to give you, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a report on this uh, at the Good Friday service probably and for sure next Easter Sunday. So let me tell you what's going to happen this week. We have prayer meetings all week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And if you've not been to a prayer meeting, this will be a great week to show up at one of the prayer meetings, 7.30 in the morning, 12 noon in the World Prayer Center. We're gonna be praying for the Easter weekend services. So it's gonna be a really powerful eight prayer meetings. And then, on Friday, I, if you've never been to a Good Friday service, let me just, I'm not trying to overhype this, but Good Friday will make Easter Sunday so much better if you come to Good Friday. Because there was not a resurrection without a cross. And on Friday night, Good Friday, 6.30, right here, we're gonna have one Good Friday service. We're expecting, we're gonna add new seats. We're expecting four or 5,000 people here. But we're going to focus our attention on the seven last sayings of the cross, what Jesus did for us at the cross. 6.30 this Friday night, Good Friday, okay? So uh, bring your family. And what I love about Good Friday, at the end, we'll have candlelight service, and we blow out our candles, and we walk out in silence. And it's really one of the most holy, powerful moments in our church calendar when we all, thousands of people walking out of here in complete silence in anticipation of Resurrection Sunday. So on Sunday, we're gonna have three services here, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and noon. Now, let me just say a couple of things about that. As many of you that can, would you please come to the eight o'clock or the noon service? I'm gonna be preaching all three. They're, all, you're gonna hear the same message. I'm gonna preach all three services, and I promise you I will preach better at noon if you show up because 10 o'clock is going to be really full. We have a lot of guests. So if you show up at 10, which if that's the time that works best for you, don't feel bad about coming at 10 o'clock. But just know that it's going to be jam-packed. But 8 a.m. and noon have, has a little more space. And if you want to come, I would appreciate that if you could come to one of those other services. However, it's never easier than on Easter weekend to invite your family and friends to come with you, all right? And I think on your, on your uh, chairs there, you have some invitation cards. Would you look at those? That's a chance for you to hand that to somebody. We sent out mailers all over the neighborhood, but it's always best when you get a personal invitation. Hey, come with me to Easter Sunday at New Life. Come sit with me. That's how you invite someone. What are your plans for Easter Sunday? I'm going to New Life. You want to go with me? Come sit with me. And I promise you, they say that about 80% of the people that you invite to Easter Sunday will say yes if they're invited. 80% of people will say yes if they get personally invited. So bring your family and friends. I'm going to share a very clear gospel message. They will hear the good news of Jesus and there'll be a chance for them to respond and say yes to Jesus on Easter Sunday, all right? Now, the following Sunday, we're going to throw a raucous big party here called Baptism Sunday at New Life Church. And it's, we already, almost already, I think we are close to about 75 or 100 people already registered to be baptized, and it's gonna be more than that. If you're ready to go into the waters of baptism, the following Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, in both of the weekend services here, we are going to have an epic celebration for all that God's done. So you come, if you're ready to be baptized, just go to newlifechurch.org. All right, other than that, we have nothing going on around here. <laughs> Turn with me now to John chapter 10. We're in a series of messages about who Jesus is. And I've been waiting for this particular Sunday to talk about Jesus as a shepherd. 
The reason that I decided to follow Jesus, the reason that I surrendered my life to Jesus is I discovered that Jesus wanted to be my shepherd. I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus is a healer. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus was born of a virgin. I believe all those things. I believe Jesus was resurrected. But the reason, the, the catalytic moment in my personal life where I decided to follow him is where I realized that he's my shepherd. And I want to talk to you about Jesus as a shepherd today out of John chapter 10, one of the most iconic passages of Scripture in the New Testament, in my opinion. John chapter 10, verse 11, he says, Jesus is talking about himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And then the wolf attacks and the flock, he attacks the flock and scatters it. And the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. And I love verse 14, I am the good shepherd. Listen to this very, you may not know this to be true, but listen to this very carefully. I know my sheep. Listen, New Life Church, the Lord knows you. Whether you're following him or not, he knows you. He says, and my sheep know me. And just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, verse 16 is why I want you to invite people to Easter Sunday. Verse 16 is the reason we're going to be aggressive this week in inviting people to come to these weekend services. Because I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I must bring them also. And they too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Come on, let's pray together over these scriptures. Father, thank you that you are the good shepherd. And we are the sheep of your pasture. And when you speak to us and we can hear you, you lead us and we can follow you. I pray today as we open up these scriptures, I pray you give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Give us a holy imagination and give us a heart that is full of faith to believe. And we ask it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen, amen. Now the problem with this text, okay, let me just say the problem as I speak to an American church this morning. Most of us were born in America, raised in America. We're Americans, amen? There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is Americans have a hard time admitting that we're sheep. And we must admit we're sheep before the Lord can be our shepherd. But let's just, let's just, let's just uh, be honest with you, okay? Have you noticed any high school mascots called sheep? <laughs> the Pine Creek sheep. Palmer Ridge sheep. No, because they're not heroic creatures. They're, they're awful. We'd rather be called lions or eagles or tigers, but not sheep. The, pro the problem is that sheep are defenseless, helpless creatures who couldn't survive long without the care of a shepherd. So I'm going to show you a video today. I've been waiting to show you this. This has been going all over the internet. Let me show you this video to summarize why we need a shepherd. Watch the video. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Wait, wait for it. <laughs> I'm going to show you this in slow motion. Watch it again, okay? Slow motion. Here it comes. <laughs> that video is what I call Tuesday. You know, you wake up and you say, Lord, rescue me today. And the Lord, by His grace, pulls us out of the ditch. And by 2 p.m., I am back in the ditch. <laughs> I need a shepherd. Listen, that's, we all need shepherds. Of all the animals that Jesus chose to use to describe us, He chose sheep. And sheep, more than any other class of livestock, require endless attention and meticulous care. They have mob instincts are especially prone to parasites and diseases. They're stubborn, 
They're stubborn and they panic at the first sign of danger. Listen, New Life Church, I have good news for you though. We may be sheep, but we have the perfect sacrificial lamb who is now our shepherd. The perfect sacrificial lamb. He has come and to be our shepherd. In fact, this is a story of Good Friday, okay? The reason that we're gonna show up here on Good Friday is we are going to celebrate and remember and gather around a cross where Jesus said, I'm going to lay down my life for the sheep. And he did. But his resurrection gave him authority and power and anointing to lead us. When I was just a little kid, when I heard this story, I realized, Lord, I, I can't save myself. You've heard me pray that over and over again. When I call people to salvation, the prayer that I normally pray is, hey, Father, I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. And see, that's the moment where we all have to come to in our lives. All the tough guys in the room, you'll have to come to that point in your life. All the strong women in the room, you'll have to come to your senses one day and realize, in spite of my strength, although I am strong, although I am smart, although I do work hard, although you've given me keen intellect and ambitions that are holy, I still, with all of that in place, I cannot save myself. And that's where I came to. I believe I'm smart, I work hard, I'm ambitious, I have holy ambitions. But even as a young man, when I saw all the potential in front of me, the one thing I realized was I could not save myself. That my strength was not enough. My brain was not enough. My work ethic was not enough to save me. And I realized at 22 years old that I needed a savior. So I wanna share a few things with you today. I wanna to share some things with you about this idea of shepherd. Because he, not only in John chapter 10, but in several other places, Jesus talked about why we need a shepherd. And one of the real reasons that we need a shepherd right now is we need a shepherd because the wolves are real. Look at Matthew chapter seven. He says, watch out for false prophets. And now listen very carefully, New Life. Jesus was saying, that there would be people who would appear to you as prophets. They would have holy words. They would have holy looks. They knew how to church, talk church language. They probably were a part of a church. They had authority in their words. They were convincing, but they're wolves. They're wolves. In other words, the, re the way you know if it's a wolf or a real prophet is do they really care about the sheep or do they care about themselves? It says, watch out for false prophets because they come to you in sheep's clothing. In other words, it takes discernment. It's hard to tell. It's easy to be tricked. It's easy to be deceived. But inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. New Life Church, I stand before you and I'm sobered every time I stand here before you. I'm, I'm humbled and I'm aware that what I teach you and what I tell you is important. And I take this sacred assignment with great sobriety. I, I stand here trembling many times on the inside because I wanna get this right. And I'm not always gonna get it right. There's, there are times when I say things about the Bible and I come back to myself and I go, I could have said that better. I could have said that clearer. I could have said that with more certainty. I could have explained that better. Almost 90% of the time when I'm on my way home on Sunday, I always think I could have done it better. I could have done that better. I could have said that better. But I want you to know that when I stand before you, I stand here for your regard, for your benefit, not my own. I stand here because I care deeply about you. I want you to grow in your faith. I want you to fall deeply in love with Jesus. In fact, we just prayed this before we came out today. I, I, we gathered in the, in the back back there and we held hands and we prayed and we said, Father in heaven, I pray that when everyone leaves the church today, that they're talking about Jesus. I don't want you talking about me. I don't want you talking about John or Daniel. I don't want you talking about any of us. I want you to leave the church today talking about the person of Jesus. In fact, we've had a great Sunday. If you can't remember who said it, but you remember what was said. See, that's how you can tell the difference between wolves and shepherds. Wolves want you to remember them. Shepherds want you to remember Jesus. 
Shepherds want you to fall in love with Jesus. In fact, shepherds are really, really good about being anonymous, not hogging the spotlight, stepping out of the spotlight and pushing people toward the cross and the resurrected tomb. New Life Church, wolves are real. And I'll stand here and when I see a wolf, I will call them out. And believe me, in 15 years as your pastor, we've had wolves roaming around the room. And I can tell you a dozen times where I have gone to people and said, stop it. Stop teaching that. Stop talking that. Stop it. Now, I don't get up here and tell you about that, but I take that responsibility seriously. I will call out people who are not here for your good. If they're here for your good, I will encourage them. If they're here for their renown and for their good, I will confront them because shepherds care about the sheep. Here's the next thing in Matthew chapter 18. It says Jesus is always looking for sheep. Jesus is always has his eyes open looking for his sheep. In Matthew 18, he says, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 90 and nine on the hill and go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, Truly, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. New Life Church, right now, people have wandered away. People have wandered off. And I believe our responsibility, our new responsibility after COVID is to go out after the people that have wandered off. We have about 90% of people back in church that we had before COVID. And this is happening all over the country, all over the world, really. I was in El Salvador and in Honduras and in Guatemala the last few months. Pastors in Central and South America are telling me the same thing. When the church had to lock down for a few weeks, it caused people to wander off. And New Life Church, our assignment, we have a new mission field now. Not only are we going after those who've never called on the name of the Lord, but I believe we have an assignment to encourage people who once belonged to the house of God, once belonged to the community of faith, to go out and welcome them back, to encourage them and bring them back. And Jesus has given us an assignment, go after the sheep that have wandered off. And New Life Church, some of you have had children that have wandered away from the faith. Some of you right now have teenagers that are wrestling with their faith. And I want you to know that we pray almost every single day for the prodigals. We're asking for the Lord to bring the prodigal home. This will be a church and this will be a community and this will be a congregation that is always standing on the front porch with our eyes open, hoping and praying and longing for the day that every single prodigal that's wandered away will find their way back home. That's what the Lord wants from us. That's what the shepherd wants from us. And then he says this, I want there to be one flock and one shepherd. And New Life Church, I believe part of being a shepherd is contending, doggedly being determined to fight for the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Listen, I am not out looking for a fight. I am looking for the Holy Spirit. I, I learned a long time ago that if I look for a fight, I would find it. But if I was looking for the Holy Spirit, I would find it. And by the way, you can't find both. Amen. And I'm out not searching for a fight. I'm out searching for the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit working in my city? Where is the activity of the Holy Spirit in my church? Where is the Spirit bursting out? Where is the Spirit breaking out? That's where I wanna be. I'm not looking for a fight. I'm looking for the work of the Spirit. One flock, one shepherd. And I know that we're living in this divisive moment, this contentious moment where people are out looking for a fight and they're wanting their pastor to be a dog on a leash and tell you sick me on whatever assignment you have for me. I am not your dog on a leash. I'm here to point you to the resurrected Christ, to the work of the spirit, to the life of the scriptures. And that's where I'm going to point you. I'm going to push you toward Jesus. One flock, one shepherd. I'm fighting against the division that's happening. I'm fighting against the fussing and the arguing. I'm fighting against that. I'm wrestling against that. I'm praying against that right now. In fact, I'm writing a book on fighting and contending for the idea of biblical unity. 
I'm, I'm writing on it because I want this to be deeply embedded into my heart. While everyone else is looking for places to separate and divide, I'm calling us back into a holy community. And I believe this with all my heart, soul, and mind, that the church is a community of revolutionary unity. Together in soul, like an orchestra being played by the Spirit. This is the idea of the church. In fact, the world should be looking inside of our churches, and our church should show them what the world would look like when Jesus is in charge. When he looks inside New Life Church, what would the world be like if Jesus is king? Well, I can tell you what it looks like. Come to New Life Church. Hang out with us and watch old people and young people and white, brown and black people, watch rich people and poor people, men and women, people from all over the spectrums come in with our different ideas and our different beliefs and our different convictions and watch us rally around the person of Jesus. Watch us come together under the unity of His Spirit and the bond of peace. This is what the world could look like if Jesus is king. And this is what a shepherd does. A shepherd doesn't go out looking for a fight. The shepherd goes out looking for sheep. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going after sinners. I'm going after people who are a long way from Jesus. I'm going to spend the remaining days of my pastoral ministry going after people who don't know Jesus. That means that I'm going to be in conversations with people who vote wildly different than me. I'm actually going to be friends with people who have different political ide ideas than me. That doesn't mean I agree with them. It means I'm trying to reach them. I, I'm not, I don't care about their politics. They're, by the way, your politics will not bring you to heaven. Christ brings you to heaven. Christ is the one that redeems you. Jesus is the one that settles your soul. Jesus is the one that saved me. That's why my focus and my heart and my attention is bringing people into the house of the Lord and introducing them to the good shepherd that not only saved my soul, but saved yours. I was once in darkness and I was brought into his marvelous light. Therefore, my assignment is to go out into the darkest places imaginable and rescue other people and bring them back in to the marvelous light. Listen, the bottom line is we're all looking for, the, for three things. You're going to spend the rest of your life looking for three things, comfort and protection and care. We're all longing for that. We're all hoping for that. We all need that. Those three things are necessary. I want comfort. I want protection. I want care. But we all have a shepherd. I have a shepherd that gives that to me. And I decided a long time ago, my, my, my money is not my shepherd. And my talents and skills are not my shepherd. Jesus is my shepherd. I want to tell you a story. I, I haven't told you this story uh, in 15 years, partly because a lot of the people that were involved in the story listened to my messages. <laughs> and sometimes I can't tell stories because it involves people who are close to me. And they listen to the messages, and it would be unfair to them to tell a painful story uh, because it would affect them. It would, it would hurt their feelings. But for 15 years, I've held this story in my heart, and I want to tell you, uh, something about Pam and I that I've never told you. When we were just right out of college, I, I graduated college, Pam and I got married. Pam had one year of college left to go, but she worked her way through college after we were married and, and graduated after about a year. Pam and I found ourselves in a church in Louisiana. And I'm 22 years old. Pam's 21. We were babies. We were kids. Married. Bright-eyed. I wish you'd have known me at 22. I was, I was full of vinegar. I was, I was, I was hyped up, and I mean, I was going to charge hell with my hair on fire and charge hell with a water pistol. I was that guy. I mean, I was intense about everything, and I found myself in this church, ready to do whatever the pastor asked me to do. I was eager, ready, hungry, hungry for God, hungry for ministry, and sure enough. I mean, I got put in charge of all kinds of things because what happens is when you're, hung, when you're eager to serve, the church finds places for you to serve. And I have, I'm a leader, so I found myself leading all these things. At 22, 23, 24 years old, I was in charge of multiple ministries in the church, a church of several thousand people. I was already leading. I, I, and I dove in. I was, I was working 70, 80 hours a week volunteering in three or four different areas of the church. Now, that's not healthy, okay? I, I admit that. It's not healthy. But I was hungry, 
and I was vulnerable because I was young. And I had a pastor in my life at that point that greatly abused me, verbally, emotionally assaulted me on multiple occasions and took advantage of my eagerness and destroyed me, quite honestly. After four years, Pam and I were so hurt and so bruised and so beat up by the shepherd that we left that church and moved to another state. That's how I ended up in Texas. I, 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 fled, I fled the church. Quite honestly, I fled. I, I had to get out of there, and I left and went back into television and radio because I told the Lord, I'll do anything for you, but I cannot, I cannot serve the church. The shepherd had wounded me. The shepherd had bruised me. And I was devastated. And when people come and tell me their painful church stories, I know exactly how that feels. I know what it feels like to have a shepherd that, whose voice you trust, whose character you trust. You trust them. You love them. You, you hold them up in esteem. And suddenly you realize they're a wolf and not a shepherd. And that's painful. It was one of the most painful things that Pam and I ever walked through as a couple. And I can tell you hours and hours and hours of conversation that Pam and I would have with one another. And we said this for five or six years. We, we said, we will not be pastors ever again. If that's what it means to be a pastor, if that's what it means to serve the church, I will never do it again. I made, I made very intense inner vows. There were a couple of times, even during that five or six years, where churches would try to hire me. And I would say, no way. I don't want anything to do with that. And I just went hard into the business. I have a business background because of those five years in exile. And I found myself on the backside of the desert, bruised and wounded and hurting. And then the Lord brought us to this church. The Lord kind of orchestrated several things. And we ended up in this church in Amarillo, Texas. And for the first time in my life, I discovered a shepherd. And I remember, this is a true story. I walked in, someone invited me to this church. And uh, it's a kind of a horror story, quite honestly. And I hope this doesn't happen next weekend. But this guy, <laughs> this guy kept inviting us, come with me, come with me, come with me, come with me to church. So Pam and I showed up in the lobby of this church. And the guy overslept and didn't come to church who invited us. So, <laughs> so New Life Church, next weekend, show up. If you, if you invite your neighbors, come, come to church with them, okay? So I showed up in the lobby. The guy doesn't show up. Pam and I look at each other and said, this is exactly what we expected. The guy who invited us to church violated us. And we were, we were getting, Pam picked up her purse. We were going to walk out and go to eat breakfast somewhere. And Garvin McCarroll walked over to me and said, hey, are you a member? Are you, are you new here? We said, absolutely. It was our first Sunday. He said, come sit with me. That started a 30-year friendship with Garvin McCarroll. He just retired off our pastoral staff. He since has moved back to Texas, but he was here on my team for 10 years with me, 11 years, 12 years. And he took me by the hand. I remember that next Tuesday, he took me to IHOP. Now, God, God lives at IHOP. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Those pancakes are from heaven, okay? So on a Tuesday morning, over crepes at IHOP. I'll never forget. I, know, I can remember the booth I was sitting in. Garvin McCarroll, across the booth, looked at me and said, Brady, you need a shepherd, and I want to be your friend. And he took me by the hand and led me like a shepherd can led me through inner healing, through counseling. He led me back into pastoral ministry. And the reason I'm here today, and the reason I'm your pastor today, is because I found, a, I found a shepherd. And I know some of you have been hurt deeply in your past by church leadership. I know you may have been hurt by a father or a mother, or someone who called themselves Jesus followers, only to discover they were mean, and they were hurtful, and they wounded you. And I want you to know I know how that feels. And I also want you to know that I walk up here every single Sunday when I stand in front of you knowing that I have spent 15 years gaining your trust. And I've earned it in drops, but I can lose it overnight. And Pam and I talk all the time that we want to be the old couple that have ended well, that have served the church. Listen, I only have one girlfriend, and she's been my girlfriend for 35 years. Pam and I live a life of integrity. Pam and I live a quiet life of peace. We're not, we're not that cool, and we're not that exciting. 
We live a very easy, quiet, humble, joyful life together with our children. We are not exciting. We're not cool. But we're just trying to be faithful. Because I've discovered over my life that the people that I want to be around the most are not cool people. I want to be around faithful people. People that wake up every day and who just want to serve Jesus who want to love the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind. They're looking for a neighbor to love, and they're looking to make disciples. Those are the kind of people I want to hang out with the rest of my life. That's the kind of person I want to become because the world doesn't need more rock stars. The world needs more shepherds. The Lord doesn't need more famous pastors. and all. He, the world needs shepherds. The church does not need any more celebrities. The church needs shepherds. The church needs people who care deeply about the things that Jesus cares about. So I want to read to you the 23rd Psalm. I want to read the entire thing. I'm going to read it as a prayer over you today. The 23rd Psalm is the shepherd Psalm. It's written by David, the ultimate shepherd of Israel who became king. Shepherds can become kings, but they can't ever lose their shepherd's heart. I want to read the 23rd Psalm as a promise of the Lord over your life. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. You read it out loud with me if you want. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. If you believe that this morning, would you say amen? Amen. amen. I want to read this over here. Listen very carefully about the 23rd Psalm. He cares when I'm sad. He cares when I'm lonely. He cares when I'm afraid. He cares about me when I am threatened. He cares when I have a financial need. And he cares about my eternal future. The Lord is your shepherd. You are in good hands, New Life Church. On Palm Sunday, I want you to remember something that, about, that I hope you never forget. The Lord is your shepherd. The Lord cares deeply about your soul and about your life. And if you will put your hope and your trust in Jesus, you will have a shepherd that will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. He'll never run away from you. He will always protect you. He will always overshadow you. He will always comfort you. He will always lead you. He will be your shepherd all the days of your life. Amen. Stand up with me this morning. Let's stand up together as we prepare to come to the table of the Lord this morning. Would you just close your eyes with me for a moment, just turn your hands toward heaven. If you are, if you're the sheep of his pasture, if Jesus is your shepherd, would you just turn your hands toward heaven and thank him in your own words right now for being a good shepherd. I'm thinking right now, about 28-year-old Brady Boyd who was bruised and wounded and hurt. And I had fallen away. I was the one. I was not a part of the 99. I was the one. And I remember at 28 years old, the Lord came looking for me. And he rescued me. And he rescued Pam. And that same year, we adopted Abram, 1998. I'll never forget that year. And I, that's when I discovered the Lord is my shepherd. And there are some of you today that have wandered off. Maybe you're watching online. You found us somehow online today. And you're the one that drifted away. Or maybe you've never heard the good news of Jesus as shepherd. I want to pray for you today. I'm going to give everyone in the room and everyone watching online an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. 
If you are a long way away from Jesus, or maybe you have your hearts come alive recently and you realize you have a need for a savior, I'm gonna pray this prayer. And if you're in the room today and you wanna say yes to Jesus, I wanna give you an opportunity right now. And this prayer is gonna sound super simple. Listen, all the hard work has already been done. Jesus has already done all the hard work for you. And all that's left is simple. It's simple. Believe, trust, oh, just listen. It's gonna sound really simple because it's very simple. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. That's it. So I wanna pray this prayer with you. And in fact, new life, let's, pray, let's all pray this prayer together. It's a good prayer to pray. Father in heaven, I am a sinner who cannot save himself. I cannot save myself. So I need a savior. I need help. I need to be rescued. So Father, today I choose Jesus. I surrender my life to the person of Jesus. I want him to be my shepherd and I wanna be the sheep of his pasture. So come today and save me, help me. I declare Jesus is Lord of my life. So fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me follow Jesus all the days of my life. And I ask it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord today for everyone that prayed that prayer? I had someone ask me, say, well, Pastor Brady, how do you know when people pray that prayer? I said, come to Baptism Sunday. Just come, come on Baptism Sunday. You'll see the results. Every time we pray that prayer, people pray, pray the prayer. I get letters and I get emails all the time. I pray that prayer. And on Baptism Sunday, you're gonna see the fruit of what happens when we give people an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. They come to Jesus. Listen, the harvest is ripe right now. The harvest is white right now. It is wide open out in the world. And we need to go out right now as harvesters and go out as ambassadors because the harvest really is ripe. So pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send out workers into the harvest field. And we are those workers, amen? Man, I'm, I'm at John, John is a songwriting machine. And this, this song is not even on the new album, but it is a powerful song about this very idea of a shepherd. And so I want you to sing this song with me and sing it as a prayer. And in just a few minutes, Pastor Daniel's gonna come and lead us to the table of the Lord. Let's worship together.
Pastor Brady just read it. Will follow me all the days of my life. My cup will overflow. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is it. That's our reality and that is our future. Come on, let's declare the scriptures. Your goodness, your kindness, my cup overflows, my cup overflows, your mercy and failing, my cup, my cup overflows, my cup overflows, your goodness, your goodness. Get your communion elements ready to receive. So Pastor Brady preached on the Good Shepherd and talked about Psalm 23, and John just sang us through Psalm 23. Let me tell you my Psalm 23 story from 12 hours ago. Couldn't have made this up. Last night I'm in bed, and I'm getting ready to fall asleep, and I, you know, when you've got young kids, you when you hear the pitter-patter of feet through the house. And I'm thinking, man, it's been an hour, everyone's been in bed, all the lights in the house are out, but I hear footsteps. So I get up and I go outside, and I wander into one of the rooms, and one of my boys, I won't say his name, I've got two of them, so I'm protect, it's the witness protection program. One of my boys is walking around in his underwear with his blanket, pitch black house, and he's just going like this. And I walk over to him, I go, buddy, what's going on? He said, I can't sleep, dad. And he was nervous, he was, he was breathing kind of hard. I can't sleep, Dad. I said, oh, come here, come here. I said, what have you been doing? You're walking around the house, what have you been doing? He said, I've been walking around praying Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He maketh me, to, we memorized it when they were little kids. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I said, really? He goes, yeah, I'm on my fourth time. <laughs> and I, as we were, Worshiping had the sense that some of you have been like that little boy. Anxious and up late and worried and uh, you're walking around and you don't know what to do next. And the Good Shepherd wants to come and hug you and pull you in close. We made a little pallet on our floor and he slept like a king on our floor last night. Woke up refreshed. Friends, he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. This is the good shepherd who wants to feed us, who wants to take care of us, who loves us, who comforts us, who settles us down in the dark night of our confusion and anxiety. So today, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, is here to feed us. He's here to settle us. And before we receive, I speak the peace of God over you today. Would you just open your hands and receive? Good shepherd, come and restore us today. Come and make us lack nothing today. Good Shepherd, come and heal us today. Good Shepherd, bring us into green pastures and get us beside quiet waters. Lord, I pray for every soul in this place that is disturbed. I pray that you would restore their souls today and lead them in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. So Good Shepherd, come and do 
what only you can do today. On the night Jesus was betrayed, friends, he took the bread and he broke it. Would you break that little wafer in your hand? And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you do this, do this for the remembrance of me. Friends, Jesus is the good shepherd and the good shepherd is for you today. You may receive the bread. On the same night, he took the cup of wine. He said, this cup is the new covenant given in my blood, and it's given for the remission of your sins. Scripture says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned to our own wicked ways. And Jesus, he keeps breaking open the cup and saying, I'm here to forgive you. I'm here to satisfy you. Today, friends, your sins are forgiven. You may receive the cup. Come on, church, let's sing. My cup overflows. Church, would you open your hands today to receive the blessing of God? As you go from here this week, I pray that the, the Lord would fill you with his spirit. I pray that you would be witnesses of the good news. I pray that God would create divine appointments for you this week to speak the word of life to people, to invite them into church for Easter, into the good news of what Jesus is doing. I pray that the Lord would bless you and that he would keep you that he'd make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And I pray that the Lord would lift his bright, smiling countenance upon you and all of your people. And may he grant you peace today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said. Can we give God thanks for what he's done here today? Another beautiful day in the house of the Lord. A couple things before you go. I wanna invite our prayer team to come pray. If you have prayer needs, we would love to agree with you. Remember, Good Friday, this Friday night, right in this room at 6.30, and then Easter next week, 8, 10, and 12. Go from here today in God's grace and peace. So much love.
for my waking breath, for my daily bread. I depend on you. I depend on you for the sun to rise, for my sleep. Thank you. 
shakes the walls. Lord, give us an anthem to sing for my soul. in the struggle. I've sung it a few times, ready? 